With respect to wireless innovation, just over a week ago, people stood in line, slept overnight, uh, so that they could get one of these, an iPhone. The iPhone highlights both the promise and the problems of the wireless industry today. On the one hand, it demonstrates the sheer brilliance and wizardry of the new technologies which are available in wireless engineering today. This cutting edge technology breaks new ground with regard to um, the technology that consumers can have in their pocket and undoubtedly consumers will cherish this device um, as though it is a part of their family. But at the same time, it, the advent of the iPhone raises questions about the fact that a consumer can't use this phone with other wireless carriers and that consumers in some areas of the country where AT&T doesn't provide service that they can't use it actually in some neighborhoods at all. And that's because the iPhone is used exclusively with AT&T's wireless plan. Moreover, even though consumers must buy this iPhone for the full price of $500 or $600, AT&T Wireless reportedly still charges an early termination fee of apparently $175 for ending the service contract early even though the phone cost wasn't subsidized and a consumer can't even take it to use it with another network provider. This highlights the problems with the current marketplace structure where devices are provided by carriers, portability of devices to other carriers is limited or non-existent and many consumers feel trapped having bought an expensive device or having been locked into a long-term contract with significant penalties for switching. I would note that a witness today, Verizon Wireless remains an anomaly in the industry by prorating its early termination fees and I applaud them for taking such a step. It has become increasingly clear, however, that wireless carriers are exerting far too much control over the features, the functions, and applications that wireless gadget makers and content entrepreneurs can offer directly to consumers. I believe that this is stultifying innovation and unquestionably diminishes consumer choice. The freedom to innovate in the wireless marketplace for gadgets and applications could unleash hundreds of millions of dollars in investment in creating new jobs. Consumers would see more phones with Wi-Fi or WiMAX chips incorporated into wireless devices and application providers could avail consumers of the opportunity to obtain new content and other technologies that enhance the consumer experience and provide additional competition. Policymakers uh, should try to figure out how to explore and promote greater innovation in the wireless marketplace and empower entrepreneurs and consumers with greater freedom. This was the idea behind the so-called Cardiphone decision in the late 1960s when the FCC broke the stranglehold that Ma Bell had over the black rotary dial phone that consumers used and allowed unaffiliated manufacturers to provide such devices in the marketplace. The result was incredible innovation and an, and an unquestioned policy success. The FCC has a rare chance to foster similar innovation in the wireless marketplace in the upcoming auctions. As I have suggested previously, the FCC should seize this opportunity to create an open access opportunity for wireless service in this auction and should insist upon Cardiphone like principles applying to a significant portion of the licenses to be offered. Recent comments by FCC Chairman Martin that he is poised to embrace these policies is uh, in a proposal for auction rules is a step forward and is welcome news. I encourage the FCC Chairman 
and his colleagues on the FCC to maximize the benefits these policies can bring to consumers and the high-tech economy in their upcoming decisions.